Hello everybody, this is Yaakov Fein and we are continuing learning TypeScript. We use this book, TypeScript Quickly. I'm a co-author of this book and we slowly reading this book together and are trying something hands-on. Uh, we are in chapter 4 in lesson number 19. We still talk about uh, generic, no, not about uh, enums. And now let's talk about generics, generics in TypeScript. Those of you who are using or know uh, Java or C Sharp, you're already familiar with this concept, uh, uh, parameterized types, but now let's see how this is implemented in TypeScript and why would we want to use generics. So uh, generic is a piece of code that can handle values of different types once again piece of code that can handle values of different type piece of code could be a function could be a class it could be an interface it could be okay that's enough so let's take a look at this example of array so look at this how do you declare array in javascript or in typescript you just add you can add square brackets after the type. In this case, I declare a constant, some values of type number. Actually, it's not about JavaScript, it's about TypeScript. The other syntax for declaring an array in TypeScript is using generic notation. You can use this array element and in angle brackets you specify the type. Angle brackets is the syntax where you can specify a parameterized type. In this case, I specify number as a type. I could have specified something like person, customer, department, string, anything you like. What's the, what's the purpose of, the, of this? What are the advantages? First of all, array is uh, an entity a structure in TypeScript that can hold values of different types. So in, uh, if in a regular array, in JavaScript at least, you can put one element is a string, the other one is a number, the third one is customer and so on. Different, right? So, uh, but if types, if we want just to keep numbers in an array, you can use either this notation, which is preferable, it's short, or this notation with generic parameter. But if you want to create an array with certain restrictions, con constraints, you want to say, I want to create an array that can store only values of specific types. Then you would use this generic notation. And let's take a look at this, uh, this example. Let's say we have a class person. It, this one is empty, but you could put uh, different members in there. That's okay. Now, using the generic notation, if you want to say that in this array, I allow to store only the types person, objects of types person, or the objects that are assignable to type person then you would say person in angle brackets in this case we create an array that can store person object or assignable to person with in this case we uh, pre-allocate uh, memory for 10 arrays to, to store 10 arrays and and let's take a look at this example a practical example let's say we have a class person which has a property string we have a class employee extends person a subclass of a person by the way since the uh, employee is a subclass of a person it becomes assignable to variables of type person this is one of the rules of assignability in typescript and we will declare a class animal the class animal doesn't uh, relate to person or employee, there is no inheritance. It's just a standalone class which has a property breed. 
After that, we want to create an array workers. I declare a constant workers and it's of type array person. I'm saying in this array, you are allowed to put only object of type person or assignable to person. And I initialize it. It's empty array by now. Next line. In the first element of the array, I want to have, uh, I want to create an instance of the person. In this element of the array, I want to create an instance of an employee. And then I, I want to create an instance of an animal. Animal is not a person, it's not a subclass of a person. Uh, so it's supposed to give us a compile time error. Let's see if it works. I will copy this piece of code from the book. This is a HTML version of the book and I will go to Playground, to TypeScript Playground. They keep improving it a little bit here and there. This is the latest one. And this is what we have on the left. On the left I have several red squiggly lines which indicate an error. Let's see. A name, person name, property name has no initializer and is not defini def definitely assigned to the constructor. We, we deal with, we deal, we dealt with this uh, many times. It's a compiler's option. I can say, you know what, uh, don't force me to do strict uh, initialization. I don't want to assign value to this uh, property in the beginning. All right. So these errors are gone related to string initialization, to property strict initialization. But one is still red. Look at this. Let me make it a little larger. See this? It doesn't like the fact that I am trying to put an animal instance in the array workers. And what does it say? It says property name is missing in type animal but required in time person. I, uh, am, as a person who knew uh, Java, who knew generics in Java. When I saw this error first time, I didn't even try to read the error message. It was natural to me. I understand why this error happens. A animal is not a person. You cannot put it in there. But then, if you will read this error message c carefully, property name is missing in type animal, but required in type person. What, what does it say? It says that the class animal has no property animal, but is required in type person. Person has a property name. Employee also has a property name because it extends person, but animal doesn't. So what does it tell me? That, does it tell me that if my class animal would have the property name, it would be happy? Let's see. Name of type string done error the error is gone man so what does it mean it means that whatever i learned in java goes down the drain almost not really actually uh, but the thing is that if you would re-watch the lesson number 10 i guess lesson number 10 Structural versus nominal type system. TypeScript is a structural type system. Uh, in there, I explain what it means, and Java is nominal type system. So in Java, you, in Java, you can declare a type of class A and create an instance of class A only. In TypeScript, these are these restrictions are not that strict. So in TypeScript, if an object on the right maybe it's even object template syntax has a required property you can assign it to the variable on the left again if you don't remember this please rewatch the lesson number 10 so what happens is if you if animal in this case has a property name it means i can write something like uh, workers workers uh, to dot name right even though it's an animal yes now it has a property name but i cannot write workers to dot breed and, and we understand why because uh, the array person 
when it allocated memory for objects of type person, didn't even allocate memory for type breed because breed is not in the class person or its subclasses in this case. So animal can work, but we will not be able to assign the breed value to the array number two, to the element number two of this array. So th th this is basically it. Um, what, I, what else I could do? I could even do something like this. Uh, worker, worker three, for example. Worker three is equal. What can we say? We can say name Mary. See, it doesn't give me errors. I didn't create a new instance of type person. I didn't create a new instance of type employee over here. I just used object literal notation over here. And it's okay because structurally this object is compatible to type person. That's why it works fine. So, once again, to reinforce, we can parameterize type. I'm saying I'm creating an array, but what to store in there, I'll tell you as a parameter. As a parameter. Um, let me see if I have uh, something nicer in the, in the chapter. Yeah, over here, take a look. Take a look. You are accustomed to, to the fact that you can pass parameter to a function, but these are values as parameters, right? Similarly, you can pass values to uh, different structures in uh, TypeScript. You can, in this case, we pass it to a class, or maybe it's an interface, it's a class probably, and we say that we're going to pass you the value of the parameter, and we decided to call it as t. We decided to say that t will represent the type that we will provide a bit later. Whoever created this class array, I mean the TypeScript teams of software engineers, they enabled array to take type as a parameter. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to use this syntax like something like this, or with a person, right? Then we wouldn't be able to do something like this. But TypeScript has a mechanism so even you can create your own functions or classes or interfaces and provide a para parameterized type to them. And I'll show you how to do this in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. This was Yaakov Fein.